So uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, earlier this month there was uh, uh, a small football tournament in Brazil. Uh, and the outcome of that, well, uh, I'm not talking about the World Cup, of course, I'm talking about RoboCup, which also took place in Brazil. And we have, as our plenary talk, uh, one of the founders of, of RoboCup Cup, and one of the presidents of, uh, of RoboCup, I think, for six years. But uh, our guest has uh, been for much longer a distinguished researcher in robotics who has taken a strongly uh, biomimetic approach to try and uh, build robots uh, that match in some interesting way the sort of cognitive and particularly the developmental aspects uh, of human behavior and human cognition. So I'm very pleased to have uh, Minoru Asada as our, our final plenary for today. I think Minoru will tell you a bit more about his background too uh, during his talk. Uh, Minoru. Thank you, thank you, Tony. So thank you for uh, giving me the, such a, uh, uh, the opportunity of the, to so honorable uh, lecture here. So as uh, you know, what uh, Tony mentioned, I was uh, you know president of the you know uh, RoboCup Federation, and I am one of the founder of the RoboCup, and also were, I was the principal investigator of the, my former project and the current project. And also uh, I'm uh, the board member of the Japanese Society of the Baby Science. So many people ask me the, why you rated the baby. So my answer is a very simple one. We like to make the, you know, the robots much more intelligent. But what's the intelligence? How the, you know, the baby in front became the intelligent? That's a big, big mystery. So the, the opposite we try to uh, understand the inner world, or, or try to uh, attack the, this big, big mystery by using the you know, uh, uh, robots or the computer simulation and so on. So uh, the RoboCup this year was already over. And actually, the last week I, uh, I was in the Kogosai conference, I gave the, you know, the plenary talk and uh, one more uh, event talk in the workshop. And this week, this, year, uh, this week, I gave the, you know, uh, yesterday I gave one talk in the, you know, uh, the, news, uh, the workshop in the robot itself. And the today, the plenary talk, so this is a fourth talk of a, a business trip. So anyhow, so the, the RoboCup is a big one, and also this time I skipped the RoboCup, first time for me to skip it because, you know, due to the plenary talk in the Kokosai conference and also here. So the RoboCup is, you know, the, if I start the, you know, to talk about the RoboCup, I need two more hours, but uh, only one hour today, so therefore I very briefly introduced the RoboCup. This shows the number of teams in the RoboCup. So we started in 1997. At that time, the first time in conjunction with the Ichikai International Giant Conference at AI, and at that time around 40 teams, but now there is more than 400 teams. So due to the limit of the space and time, so only 400 teams are allowed to participate, but around the world, the number of teams Growing and growing and growing. So the the last year, we our, my team, my own team, got the championship of the, you know, the human league in the adult sides, and also best human of the, uh, award uh, with the Louis Vuitton cap. It's a Louis Vuitton cap is in you know, the back of the crystal, and it's very very expensive. So uh, this uh, is the last year digest. This is a middle size ring. So uh, it was held in the Netherlands, in Dublin. So where the queen uh, visited us. So the, so everything is automatic. You can see the you know, camera on the top. Yeah, it's a local team, so it's so exciting. It's a very strong you know, shooting device. Okay. Uh, this is in a RoboCup rescue. So we built up some real size rescue scene, and uh, only this rig, the teleoperation, the remote sensing, is allowed. So through only the, the robot uh, sensors and so on. So the competition is that to find the victims, some uh, the dummy doors, and also where the glass, uh, some situation of the disasters and so on. So the many teams, you know, apply to the, this kind of the, uh, vehicles, and sometimes the flying robots to capture the you know, stations. And this is in world sponsored league. So company is a fest. The fest uh, supported us and then uh, they have their own the league. The contents of the competition is some assembled uh, some industrial parts and also uh, the carrying some parts to somewhere to somewhere and so on. And this is a small size league, so I suppose maybe this is the quickest movement, so it's a bit sometimes difficult to follow the, or the ball tracking. 
And also we have some simulation rig too. So the, in the small size rig, the TV camera from the ceiling. Therefore, in this case, only one brain and the, the multiple robots. And this is a, a kind of the, or the human league. So we are using the, or the Aldebaran now as a standard platform. In addition to the standard platform, we have uh, often very, very unstable. Uh, the kit size, and uh, uh, this is the kit size, the smaller one. This is the team size, still unstable. So the, in addition to the world uh, soccer competition, we have some uh, the daily application. So this is a RoboCup at home. So the mission is you know, to identify the family member or to help you know, people to, uh, to carry something. So this is a daily life application. The RoboCup Rescue is a non-daily life application. Therefore, we need to the apply the, you know, some uh, technology grown up in the uh, soccer competition to the daily life or non-daily life application like this one. But still, okay. like in the you know, real robot league, so the designer, the researcher specified you know, the program, uh, specified the behavior very, very exactly. So we need more you know, uh, cognitive and also the learning issues and so on. So the, today, you know, uh, the key aspect of my talk in the, this conference is that this conference mentions that biomimetic and biohybrid systems. The, for me, the biomimetic means that so the, not only the physical mechanism, but also the mental one, mental mechanism is also biomimetic should be, the robot should be like this one. And also, in case of the biohybrid system, uh, we, do not, we have not doing the better type robotics, but uh, also with the humans and the robots, it's kind of the hybrid system some interaction. And in addition to that, today I mentioned about the cognitive uh, the versus affective uh, issues uh, towards artificial empathy, and also robot as a tool to study the human behavior and the mind. So this is the outline of my talk. So we're, uh, the first, I'd like to uh, introduce the, some uh, affective and the cognitive development robotics, and uh, uh, you know, uh, towards artificial emphasis. As a you know, approach of the affective and the cognitive development robotics, I prepared the six studies, and as long as I have time, I try to explain everything, but if I don't have time, I may skip something. And finally, I showed some the huge issues. So the, what's the human development? That's a big question. So uh, I was born 1953 the same year of this museum. This museum was born in the 1953, and this is elementary school, the junior high school, and the high school. When I was undergraduate, I got married. So I got married much earlier than the average of the Japanese people here. And I stayed one year in the University of Maryland. And in 1997, that's the first RoboCup. And I enjoyed the karaoke in Shanghai. So this is a typical Japan, uh, the human development. OK, I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, actually uh, this is a 4D sonar of the you know, fetus in the womb. So the left side is uh, 26 weeks. You can see that the fetus often touch the, you know, his or her own face. And the right side is uh, 36 weeks, four weeks before the birth. So you can see that the open the eyes, open the mouth, and so on. So you can see that something already happened before the birth. As nowadays, this, the body sauna is very, very popular now. So where there's a mother, you know, when left the, the hospital, the you know, hospital give or the, sell the, this kind of DVD or something. So the, after the birth, so the just, after the birth, the newborn baby uh, obtained the different kind of behaviors. For example, at the hips, hand, at hips months, so hand rigor. Hand rigor, just look at the hand. But it means that so we're from a viewpoint of the, the learning target in robotics, it means that the, whole, the learning in the world and the inverse models of the hand, just in the specify this angle, this angle, this angle, you can specify the final posture. This is a uh, world of kinematics. And if I try to grasp something, and then this angle, this angle, what can I do here? That's the inverse model. This is a, at the huge mass, maybe the newborn baby learned this kind of the world and the inverse models of the, the hand. Or the six months, the finger the, as a pace, or a seven months, drop the object, and so on. And also, where the, there are some several behaviors. For example, the, at 10 months, the imitation happens. The imitation is very, very important to, to generate the, you know, some behaviors. At the end of the one year, just one year after the birth, so the, the newborn baby 
or uh, the pretend something. That means you know, some kind of mental simulation or imagination. So we gave up to design the robot who can obtain the different kind of behavior just one year. Why? Because you know, we do not know what kind of mechanism enables our infant to obtain the different kind of behavior just one year. So someone says that it's a nature. But actually, the another question is how, how, how to embed the, this kind of the behaviors. You know? So the, you know, as you know, the nature versus nurture is a very classical the argument, the big argument about this one. But nowadays, nature side and the nurture side closely related to each other in the different level. So therefore, the Matt Riddle has mentioned that no longer it is, it is nature and nature versus nurture, but nature by nurture. For the us so to design the robots, the, one of the big issues is a balance between the nature side, to what extent it embeds some structure in advance, and how much we can expect them through the uh, interaction, the learning and the development. So uh, we have been advocating you know, uh, cognitive robotics so far. And uh, recently we added, because someone said that the cognitive means the narrow definition of the cognitive ex uh, you know, excludes some affective aspect. Actually, I suppose that the cognitive issues include everything. But uh, to enrich the world, the cognitive robotics, I just say that affective and the cognitive robotics, it aims at understanding the human development process, human affective and cognitive development process by using the robots and the computer simulations. And its core idea is physical environment and social interactions so that, uh, that enables the you know, information structuring through the interaction with the environment, including the uh, other agents. The physical em uh, environment is not new things. Actually, the Roger Spell, he is a, a Nobel winner, and he's very famous for his split brain, the study of the split brain. So one year before the, my birth, uh, birth year, 1952, six, one, uh, 62 years ago, he has already mentioned that. To understand the mind, they begin with the patterns and the motor activities, and uh, derives an you know, underlying mental structure from them. So the one of the point, I add is that so, so we try to design you know, the, some robots with some the capability of you know, based on the capability of the mind or something based on the, this physical environment. About the social interaction, I like to prefer the, this uh, book. So this guy uh, is Alba Noe. He is a young philosopher. The, he mentioned his book is that out of our heads. So many brain scientists, neuroscientists suppose that the essence of the human minds or Maybe if we can design the robot mind, it should be inside of the brain, the robot brain. But he mentioned that the, the, you know, the mind is kind of the phenomena. So through the interaction with the two entities. So that's out of our heads. Therefore, this is very suggestive for us to design how to design some phenomena of the, uh, the mind, mind-like phenomena of the robots. So we should be careful about designing something, some infrastructure or some uh, some fundamental structure of that one. It's not, uh, you know, itself can emerge some mind, something. The interaction is a very, very essential one. And then I propose, I have been proposing the affective and the cognitive development uh, robotics. So approaches of the ACDR, affective and cognitive development robotics. So roughly speaking, we have two phases. One is that very, you know, the, uh, construction of the you know, computer model and uh, uh, hypothesis generation and the verify using the simulation and the robots and uh, uh, real agent and so on. The, the second part is just to offer the new uh, means or the robot as a tool, especially the providing the robot as a reliable reproduction tool in the psychological experiment. So this indicates some similar of the, my former, uh, my previous project, the starting from the fetal simulation that, that was uh, done by the uh, group of the Yasuku Niyoshi University of Tokyo, and also were some uh, learning of the dynamic movement using the, some artificial mass is a professor cohort of the group, and also were some kind of safe as a discriminations or the based on some imaging study uh, by the you know, uh, Toshio Inui, the Kyoto University, and also some social interaction of the barrier limitation or some uh, empathic 
uh, development and so on. And so with the help of you know, uh, the Professor Hiroshi Ichiguro, he, now he is very famous for his Android, the Geminoid, but he was uh, my former uh, project. He was uh, the group leader. So often I was, uh, I am asked, you know, uh, can robot physically grown up? So the, in this conference, so some people are starting with, uh, doing some wet type robotics to emerge or to uh, some organs or something. But uh, it takes so much time and also the uh, needs money and uh, the human researchers. So instead, we developed a different kind of the research platform like this one. And then depending on the age, we focus on some research issues at, the, at that age. So for example, so just before the birth, we, uh, the university, uh, the Professor Yasukunis group, uh, designed some uh, the features in the womb. And after the birth, for example, were uh, seven months, eight months, nine months. So they have to close the lining of the scroll, and also the 11 months, the walking, and so on, so on. So this shows uh, some kind of the uh, robot part homes. The top left is uh, just we say thinking. It's just uh, some uh, some research platform to study the, some uh, some some social communication. And top right is in words, the professor co-hosted groups in you know, order learning to flow by using the artificial muscle. And at the bottom of the uh, top, uh, left bot uh, bottom, uh, left bottom is just a uh, uh, co-development of the uh, caregiver and the robot, CB Sphere. So CB Sphere is run to walk, and the uh, caregiver run to teach something. So we're the kind of co-development. And the bottom right is just kind of imitation game by using uh, some infrastructure of the oh. neural system and so on. Okay, so to this time I like to focus on the words of artificial empathy. So well, this is a current, uh, the overview of the, our uh, current project. Uh, the, my project, my group consists of the four groups. The first one is the brain development simulation on the theory group. And the second one is the brain function imaging group. So uh, function MRI, uh, EEG, and uh, MEG stuff. And also uh, the behavior preservation of psychological experimental group. The, uh, the, you know, supported by the robot platform. We are using the robot platform to study the inward the imaging or uh, some psychological experiment. So the one of the big issue is that um, what's the cell? So yesterday, uh, Tony, is in, uh, Tony organized a uh, uh, robot cell. That's a very, very interesting one. And we focus, uh, we just in, follow the inward, uh, neither the definition of the cell. So this indicates some kind of the development of the, or the, uh, the cell. The concept of the cell. The first one is ecological cell. There is in or some interaction with environment or object in the environment. So in this case, we suppose that's kind of the uh, synchronization with the environment. This is an you know, ecological cell. And the second one is interpersonal cell. It's just the caregiver enters the situations. At the beginning, in the world, the caregiver's body is supposed to be the, the infant's body because the caregiver tried to help the uh, infant's behavior. But the gradually, in you know, the uh, the, uh, the caregiver makes the, the infant much more independent, you know. So in that case, in you know, the infant start to uh, think about that, okay, the caregiver's body is not like me. So there are starting to like me uh, hypothesis, and then different from me, uh, changing to the different from me, the hypothesis. So in this stage, mirror neuron system maybe they have an important, I uh, may have the important role to emerge some internal uh, personal cell. And finally, some social cell. So in case of the social cell, the completely the cell as a separation is uh, perfect. Then therefore the baby is uh, synchronized with the mother, desynchronized the mother, and synchronized the father, and so on. So in this case, some capability of the you know, synchronization and desynchronization should be perfect. So as an underlying mechanism, we suppose that, so well, uh, I expand some three stages. The corresponding to each stage, we suppose that some fundamental structure. For example, in the first stage, probably some kind of the mechanism of entrainment is maybe sufficient. But in the second stage, we may have uh, you know, some more control of the inhibition, and also the concept of some agents. And finally, also some imaging, so we're kind of the imagination, or the mental rehearsal, and so on. So in this figure, we just added you know, some uh, additional function in the second stage and the third stage, but uh, we expect that you know, some uh, fundamental structure emerge with these kind of additional functions. So about the why I focus on the uh, empathy is uh, that, so this is in words, a primary researcher uh, devolved and mentioned that so there were some parallelisms on the empathy and the imitation. The starting the emotional contagion and also the motor mimicry and then some evolutionary, uh, this is uh, evolved and so on. So I look at the, uh, the uh, 
right side is that you know, uh, self has a distinction. That's you know, evolution process of the empathy, evolution process of the imitation indicates some implies that includes the self as a discrimination, a distinction. So I focus on this point. So the you know, terminology of the empathy and sympathy is sometimes confusing. And actually, two years ago, I used empathy and the sympathy. But my colleague, he is German. He was uh, the German guy. His definition completely opposite. Therefore, the, I just you know, uh, follow the, the definition of the, these guys, of the psychologists or neuroscientists, and so on. So you can see that it's you know, starting with the emotional contagion and the emotional empathy and the cognitive empathy and uh, sympathetic uh, compassion, a uh, sympathy and compassion. And you can see that some boundary between them, so the consciousness, uh, unconscious level, and the conscious level. The, I drew the, this one to the, like this one, the starting with the emotional contagion, motor mimicry, and the emotional, compass, uh, emotional uh, empathy, cognitive empathy, and so on, so on. So this uh, indicates some kind of a hierarchical structure. For example, the cognitive empathy includes the uh, you know, emotional empathy or emotional contagion. So that's kind of some, you know, so were uh, some hierarchical, hierarchical structure. So roughly speaking, some evolution or development may, may start from the uh, bottom left to the top right and so on. I make the you word, know, uh, the reverse model uh, upside down, and then I put uh, some kind of the you know, keywords of physical environment and the social interaction of the affective and the cognitive developmental works. And you can see that some development of the ecological self, the interpersonal self, and the social self, and so on. So this is a summary of the, the how the, uh, you know, the uh, emotion developed, starting from the uh, emotional contagion, and then uh, if the agent has uh, some capability of the self-awareness, so the emotional empathy happen, and the uh, uh, passive taking, theory of mind, the mentalizing, then uh, cognitive empathy happen, and uh, until the cognitive empathy, so where the uh, self's uh, internal state, the emotional state, and the others is the same. So the, you can see that some kind of the orientation of the, uh, the you know, uh, the, uh, this one inside is the same. Okay, but after the inward uh, compassion, uh, cognitive empathy, you can see that. So, if agent has an emotional contagion, emotional regulation, so then, so we understand as a emotional state, but self has uh, self may have a different emotional state. That is uh, sympathy and the compassion. After that, there are two uh, two extensions. Why is that? Okay, the other's emotional state just again the insight. So that the typical example is in you know, sad music induce a uh, present emotion. So the perceived emotion is sad. Okay, sad music perceived as sad, but the listener enjoyed uh, sad music. This in this case the perceptual emotion and the felt emotion is uh, different. Another extension is that self and other has a membership. And then, if the in-group, out-group cognition happened, so the MB and the Sharon will happen. This is in a way, some kind of the evolution or different process of the empathy. So about the cognitive and the versus affective in empathy. So I mentioned that, so were the evolutionary process, so probably the emotional empathy is included by cognitive empathy. But the brain scientists mentioned that there are two systems of the empathy. So the cognitive empathy and the emotional empathy is a different different function, different brain regions, and different period of the uh, development. Therefore, this seems that it, the independent structure. So another uh, the evidence is that the cognitive and the emotional influences in an, uh, anterior cingulate cortex, ACC, in uh, two different systems. So you can see that the red region, red region indicates the cognitive task. And also the blue region is the emotional task, for example, uh, uh, four calls of the three, 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 or the mother, 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 something. Okay, so anyhow, but, but in case of the sad music in the present emotion, the process of emotion is cognitive, seems cognitive, but the felt emotion is affective. Therefore, the relationship between the you know, affective and the cognitive is not a simple inclusion, not a complete separate system, but you know, more complicated one. For example, in this case, the process with emotion itself is the target of the uh, felt emotion. And the situation itself is organized by the uh, cognitive process, that the metacognitions. 
So therefore, the recently uh, Louis Pessor, uh, he published the book from MIT Press. The title is Cognitive Evolution Brain. So his claim is that you know, uh, from dichotomy of the you know, affected by the cognitive to the more uh, dynamic network structure. For example, the, you know, uh, so far, you know, the many uh, the brain scientists try to uh, identify the brain vision, one-to-one -one correspondence to the function, and then uh, some sequence of the behavior may happen about the, you know, uh, following some uh, the, the function and so on. But actually, the one brain region may have the different functions, that means different network, or more dynamically changing. Therefore, the, his claim is that from dichotomy to the uh, dynamic network structure. And this indicates that some divergence of the brain regions. The red means uh, more function is, you know, this brain region committed to the uh, more, much more functions. And the blue is uh, a much less one. So the attempt to build such a structure through the construct approach is our uh, desire. Okay, so from now on, I try to uh, explain the, you know, uh, some studies we have done so far. So uh, uh, first one is uh, the fetal uh, neonatal uh, the snake simulations. This is actually, the, my colleague is here, is also a committed one. And second one is the physical human robot interactions. And third one is early development of the mirror neuron system. And the fourth one is the intuitive parenting for empathy development. And the five one, fifth one is the vowel acquisition by the maternal imitation. And the sixth one, social, uh, the final one is social brain analysis. So the uh, the earlier one is that some computational model were real robot experiment at modeling and so on. But the later, the world robot as a tool to, to study the human brain, uh, human behavior and uh, uh, mind. The first one is the feature of the neonatal snake simulations. So actually, as I mentioned, the, this work was started by the, you know, Professor Yasuo Kuniyoshi in the University of Tokyo. And also his colleague, uh, Hiroki Mori, now he is my colleague. And uh, he, they designed you know, the fetus in the womb. So it consists of the, you know, uh, okay. Consist of the uh, very simple sphere and the cylinders. And they put the, the almost 200 muscles. So with the, the very, very simple brain. So the left hemisphere, or right hemisphere. And it has in you know, uh, uh, S1 and uh, somatosensory area and the motor area, S1 and M1. And each muscle has alpha neuron, gamma neuron, and so on. And also they put to the uh, CPZ, a central potential generator. It's this kind of neural oscillations, neural oscillators. So in this figure, uh, the solid line indicates a fixed ratio, fixed weight. But the, the broken lines, broken arrows, means some running target. So therefore, the, through the interaction, there is a neural system and the muscle skeleton system and the environment, um, they are interact together. So this indicates some kind of then world simulations. So you can see that the womb is approximated to some very soft sphere, and the inside is some rigid. So you can see that so there was some movement of the features, and this red indicators of muscles, 200 muscles. Each muscle has some oscillations, okay? So the, and also this indicates some tactile sensation. Red means high pressure, so the double touch happened them often, and some activity of the S1 and M1. Now through this running, there are two things that happen. One is that you know, some kind of the, uh, body mapping. So at the beginning, you know, some uh, body mapping is random. But through the running, uh, you can see that leg, arm, toes, uh, neck, and so on are the separated. So the kind of the, at the beginning, the fetus does not know what kind of where, where is my body or something. But after the running, this kind of the segmentation may happen. So the, one of the reasons is a very simple one. So for example, the fetus, uh, some kick the leg and so on, okay. And then neck is bending. So this is some kind of the physical constraint enables some kind of the segmentation of something. The another one is that after the birth, we pick up the fetus outside. So due to the gravity, the fetus of the newborn baby shows some kind of crawling or some turnover and so on. So this is, you know, we should, care, we should note that, you know, this behavior is, you know, researcher does not, has not programmed anything. Nothing, so really emerged through the interaction and so on. But this is another example, so that's uh, 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 Hiroki Mori here and uh, uh, Kuniyoshi. So uh, there are two uh, features in the room. The top is normal one, 
Normal one means that so well, tactile sensation, as you know, lip and fingertip is very, very high density of the tactile sensation. On the other hand, the back is very coarse. So the top features is that normal, normal one. On the other hand, the bottom is you know, a not abnormal one with a homogeneous tactile sensation, which does not exist biologically, but we can construct, we can design this one. So actually, it seems difficult to discriminate the behavior of this one. But in the top, the uh, top is a normal one. It's a number of touching, OK? Touching then or, uh, the face or body and so on. The number of touch is the increasing, the increasing. On the other hand, bottom, uh, that somehow the number of touching is decreasing and decreasing. And this means that this implies that the medical doctor says it is going to die or something. We do not know the detail, but it is one of the point is that that's a typical aspect of the, some constructive approach. We can build the abnormal one which does not exact, uh, exist uh, biologically. But compared to you know, uh, this behavior, we may know that some, some another or new understanding of the existing you know, uh, the, uh, some distribution, why we have some you know, uh, heterogeneous distribution or something. So in this simulation, the one of the issue is the neural dynamics. The neural system has its own dynamics, and the body has a body dynamics, the so physical dynamics. Now, what kind of relationship, uh, relationship, relationship between them is one of the big questions. In case of the features, it has many degrees of freedom, so therefore it's sometimes difficult. Therefore, the, my colleague uh, Hiroki Mori and myself uh, uh, observe and analyze the uh, interaction between the complex uh, nonlinear oscillator uh, networks and the muscle skeleton system by using the uh, snake-like uh, you know, the robots. So uh, this is actually the, you know, a direct coupling of the you know, sensory motor uh, body parts and the chaotic element. So that's the filter simulation. It's based on this architecture. But we may add the other chaotic elements. So it may correspond to the other brain regions, such as in you know, uh, the cerebellum or some uh, basic ganglia and so on. So at this moment, we do not intend to one-to-one -one correspondence of the chaotic element to the brain region or the functions. But anyhow, we just observe that what happened if we add uh, such a kind of you know, uh, networks and so on. And as a result, we obtain that some, some network, the scale-free network, uh, generate you know, or more complicated behaviors or more correctly the similar uh, patterns or the motions and uh, so switching and so on. But without uh, network, so very simple uh, the movement. Therefore, we suppose that some, uh, with, uh, with some network, we may have, you know, we may generate more uh, different behaviors and so on. And, uh, okay. And now that we also uh, built up some uh, the fetus robots. So the suppose maybe the, the day after tomorrow, the, my colleague uh, will show that this kind of the poster as so one. Okay, the second one is a physical human robot interaction. Actually, the, this is uh, you know, inspired by the, you know, uh, the baby, baby's you know, uh, stand up. So the, you know, the caregiver helps you know, stand up this one. So uh, the, we introduced a new robot, the CB Square. It's a pneumatically actuated robot, but he cannot stand by himself. Therefore, the human caregiver try to help the, the rise up this one. But it's not so easy to uh, to rise up to get some skill or something. The first study is just we observed in you know, some several trials. Some expert is successful, but the non expert or beginner is a failed to do that. Okay. So uh, what happened, or how can I analyze uh, this kind of behavior? So the basic idea is that if, if I succeeded in you know, rise up, it means that my movement and the robot movement is synchronized, okay? So uh, by using the, some special temporal correlation, okay? So vertical axis indicates the time course, and the horizontal axis indicates some gap, or some, uh, you know, uh, between the gap or some difference of the my movement and the robot movement. The starting point is that, so the center is just you know, synchronized, completely it's synchronized. But the starting point is a little bit shifted. So in case of the starting one, okay, so you can see that some white region is a high correlation. The red region is a, a negative correlation. So in case of the successful case, so the white region is connected. This means smoothly synchronized on this one. On the other hand, in case of the fail, so you can see that the white region disconnected. Therefore, they failed. 
like this one. So this is the first, uh, you know, as long as we know this is a real the physical interaction of the, between the robots and the humans, like this one. The second one is how to improve the behavior. So the basic idea is that, okay, so human trainer try again, again, and again. And human trainer uh, tells, teach the robot, oh, this is case okay, this is okay, this is okay. And the robot collect only the good data and improve the, their uh, behavior, okay. So uh, by using database and then switching the uh, rules and so on, so on. Okay, so uh, this is you know, kind of the human in the loop approach. So the, you know, through the learning process, okay, the human teacher teach or the, you know, advise the some failure or success and so on. And then robot try to collect or something. But actually, this robot has a 52 degree freedom. But by using the PCA, so surprising the reduction, just the two or three. And you can see that some, you know, first principle component is horizontal access, and the second one at the vertical access, the starting the one, and then two and three. One is, you know, sit down. And then number two is just between the uh, stand up and sit down. So where uh, you can see is some results, okay? It's sometimes uh, somehow a little bit difficult to see the difference of the before the running and after running. But actually, the before the running, it's the you know, trajectory is uh, very, seems, uh, has uh, the big, large the, the difference, the variance. Uh, but actually, you know, uh, at the beginning, so human trainer tried to rise up the vertical. But after the learning, the more horizontally, it means uh, less energy and uh, uh, quicker and so on. So this shows, you know, top and the bottom is a uh, different persons. So you can see that because the training, so the trajectory is a uh, uh, large difference. But after la learning, you know, the, uh, the variance is much smaller. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the message of the CBSK is that the human-like body stru uh, structure enables the humans to make it easy for them to predict the robot motions. So the humanoid structure, or human-like structure, is very, very essential to uh, predict the movement. And also, the human in the loop action uh, improvement <laughs> is essential to customize the robot behavior in future uh, society. Okay. The number three is that the early development of the mirror neuron system. Maybe you know the mirror neuron system is found in the Rizolatis group of the uh, uh, monkeys uh, uh, premolar area. Of, no, 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 I forgot. Anyhow, the F5 or something. And then the, the, this neuron is fired when the, the monkey doing some task or also observes the you know, same task by the other agent, other monkey or other humans. Okay, so the one of the mystery, or one of the question is how to, how the mirror neuron system emerged. So this is a very simple idea. So we suppose that, okay, agent at the beginning, very, very low resolution, the spatial resolution and temporal resolution. Therefore, agent cannot discriminate its own movement and other's movement, okay. But gradually, the own movement and other movement is, you know, Visually, uh, uh, visual development enables the agent to discriminate the self movement and the other's movement. But still, uh, you know, at the beginning, you know, uh, the, this movement, uh, this observation is connected to the, the uh, motor command. Therefore, after the you know, discrimination of the visual motion of the self and the other, but still, the motor command is connected. Therefore, the agent observes as that motion, so the agent demands its own movement. Okay, this is a very simple idea. Number four is that, so, uh, uh, okay, how the inner world robot can, as uh, a term, capability of the feeling something, some emotional state. So we suppose that, okay, so the robot has, or the robot infant has a very, very fundamental emotional state, present, unpleasant, the sleep and arousal, the rustles in world to the emotional state. But using some intuitive parenting, so intuitive parenting is that um, uh, the caregiver automatically copy or imitate the infant's the emotional state. For example, the infant uh, walking and uh, falling down and crying, or the caregiver, oh, like, oh, like this one. So well, automatically, caregiver imitates the you know, infant's emotional state. The, by using this one to the, some uh, competition model, so by using some uh, sort of online mapping and the heavy learning, so the infant learn to copy or learn to infer the in the world. 
for example, look at the mother's face, and then uh, well, I can imagine the, her internal state because I have already learned you know, the mapping between the, the self-emotional state and the mother's facial expressions. So this is just a very simple idea, but uh, we suppose that this kind of the intuitive parenting is uh, one of the uh, key aspect of the, how artificial agent uh, de differentiate some its emotional state to the more happiness, sadness, and so on, so on. Okay, the fifth is uh, the Bowell acquisition uh, the by maternal imitations. So with the, the physical environment, we, I, I, okay, I claim that the you know, affective and the cognitive development products has the key idea is the physical environment and the social interaction. In case of the Bowell acquisition or uh, through the maternal imitation is that the physical environment running uh, learning the uh, relationship between the own vocalization and its perception, that's the physical environment. About the social interaction, it means that to show the, the correct example for the correspondence between the infant's vocalization and her own one, that's the teaching, okay. This is no, no, it's no wonder, but uh, second point is much more important. To, to entrain the infant vocalization to the, uh, her own one unconsciously, she, 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 uh, she cannot perfectly imitate the infant's vocalization. That's important because in words, uh, so, okay, the mother's infant's vocalization system is not completely the same. Therefore, mother try to imitate the infant, but it's not perfect. But this entrains you know, the infant's vocalization to her own one, okay. So actually, the most important, uh, most difficult issue is that this is a hormonal space, okay, you can see that. So for the infant, the adult, the different uh, the, the zone, the different sound, and in case of the robot, is you know much more uh, less capability of the you know, pronunciation of the sound, the vocal itself. Anyhow, so the sound the imitation does not mean the, any copying, the, any imitating the sound itself, but through the interaction. Okay, so the caregiver and the infant, uh, the infant, uh, entering to each other. I skip the detail of the, you know, uh, the learning mechanism, but uh, by using the, some artificial vocal, artificial vocal tract system, or can I hear? It's okay? Okay, so well, this is um, uh, the running draft of the universe, so the interaction between the universe, or the vocal robots and uh, my, my students. But you know, the, so the main question I, we got is that, what kind of behavior of the, you know, uh, the caregiver, or how much the caregiver's behavior affects the, some of this kind of learning? So the, our anticipation bias in our uh, perception is very, very important uh, factors. The caregiver's affirmative interpretation and the imitation of infant's uh, immature behavior uh, develop the infant's social abilities. This is uh, you know, uh, some statement from the different psychologist. So we suppose that you know, uh, we have maybe some the caregiver have the two biases in this process. One is a perceptual magnet and the uh, artificial magnet. That is a magnet effect. You know, they know before the six months, the newborn baby, they can discriminate any kind of vowels around the world. It means that they perceive you know, the vowel or vowel change as it is. For example, I say, uh, okay, so I changed from A to E, very smoothly I tried. So before six months baby, okay, they recognize the discontinuity as it is. But after the six months, due to the you know, effect of the mother tank, so we in front just it perceives a or e. This is a magnet effect. So the inner words are, uh, the, the mother has this kind of the, you know, uh, the magnet effect. Even though the you know, infant say just between a or e, so the, the caregiver perceives this is a or e or something, okay? This is the first one. 
The second one is auto mirroring bias. So by which then or the hard vowel is much closer to the expected vowel, vowel one. So this is kind of some social bias, something, okay. For the first one, we have some experiment. So we make some sound, you know, and uniformly distributed sound of the vowels and uniformly distributed the sound of the, the machine sound. And we ask the, uh, the subject to imitate the sounds. Okay, so the result was like this one. So we expect that in words, uh, sub, uh, the human subject vocalizes like uh, the machine, but the human subject perceives you know, uh, the machine's sound as their own vowels. Therefore, the you know, perception is just, you know, the, uh, the variance is much smaller than the, you know, uh, the uh, vocals ones and so on. So this is one of uh, one evidence of the you know, we have some the magnet effect. The second one is a little bit complicated situations. Okay, so uh, we ask the you know, subject that okay, please, please imitate the you know, uh, computer sounds. Okay, this is a group A control group, and the experimental group is that okay, please imitate the robot sound, the computer sound. Sometimes computer imitate you. Okay, so this is some bias. But actually, the same thing happened. But then, was, uh, in the control group, so, okay, so where the machine says something, and then subject says something. Okay, the different vowels, different vocal sound. But in case of the experimental group, if if subject say ah, and then the computer say er uh, something, but the subject suppose that okay, the computer imitate myself. Therefore, this sound like ah, and then I imitate again ah something. So uh, by using this experiment, you can see that, so that this shows that the, bo uh, the voice difference, voice future difference uh, between the you know, uh, continuous trials. So the control group is that you know, they do not have any bias, therefore the you know, difference is larger than experimental group. Experimental group expect that, anticipate that, okay, the robots imitate myself, okay. So this is in you know, the auto mirroring bias. So we're, uh, in the first set and second set, we uh, verified uh, this effect. The third set, we failed sometime, somehow. So the result is like this one. So this indicates some you know, interaction between the caregiver and the infant. So with two biases, so we're, you know, we're, uh, clearly so we're the infant's battle converged to the right place. But you know, the top, uh, that one is only the magnet effect. Therefore, converge quickly, but a different place. Or only the you know, auto mirroring bias. So the definition, uh, the you know, tendency is very similar, but not converged. Therefore, two kinds of bias is you know, infant bias does not form small clusters without sensory motor magnet. And also, bias clusters are not guided to desired native bias without auto mirroring bias. Okay. So uh, many uh, people ask me, why not using the speaker? So we care about some physical environment. And actually, I will not mention about some importance of physical environment of the vocal system, but you know, sometimes we introduce some subject criterion, such as you know, rest talk and rest deformation, easy to vocalize something. So, uh, but still, uh, you know, uh, sound is not so similar to the, some uh, baby voice. So we need some kind of the baby voice. It's a baby abuse. No, no, no. no. It's, we try to, uh, you know, we try to generate the uh, baby-like voice by manually. So uh, the, before, the, my students uh, designed some vocal system, but uh, we failed to control something. So uh, now uh, we are using you know, or some uh, more sophisticated the vocal system, and my colleague uh, Nobutsuna Endo is going to present the poster in the, on Friday. Okay, something. So finally, I'd like to uh, uh, show the, some, the social brain analysis. This is not purely the robotics research, or much more about the human study, but using the robots. Okay. The title is a little bit wrong. So, okay. The different impression of the other agent obtained through the social interaction uniquely modulate the dorsal and the ventral pathway activities in the social human brain. Okay. How also you like this one? Okay, so in case of the you know, vowel limitation, I mentioned that some effect of the you know, uh, auto mirroring bias. That you know, the human subject expect or anticipate something. This is a kind of bias. Okay, in this case, some social interaction can be the bias. Okay, so we have the 16 human subject and some social interaction with the humans 
and the actoroids are one of the androids, and some mechanical humanoid, and the keep on, and the computers. Okay, so were the before the functional MRI scanning, so were the human subject interact with uh, some five kinds of the opponent. And in the, uh, in, the, in the fMRI scanner, so each subject has a game with the opponent. So matching penny games, this kind of gamble, loss or obtain or something. But supposing there's some picture of the opponent in human or android or actoloid or keypon and computer. But actually everything the same. So the human subject is tricked by the, this kind of social bias. And we apply the you know, analysis of the impression and the brain activities affected by one. The basic idea of the behavior analysis is like this one. So in this case, this is some previous work of the Takashi et al. So we're matching penny game, okay? So in this case, the computer is very, very stupid, very, very poor capability. And the human opponent is a little bit higher capability. So the, you know, the subject may change. In this case, you know, the picture shows that uh, only uh, the opponent is a computer or opponent is a human opponent. But actually, both cases are the same as a random a strategy of the, by computer. So you can see that if subject could suppose that, okay, the opponent is a human, so human has a very complicated strategy. So I should be, I should have the, I should have the, you know, the same or higher the, uh, strategy to get a win. And then therefore we have some measure of the entropy. So the high entropy, larger entropy means a very complicated strategy. And the smaller entropy means a very simple strategy. So you can see that so human subjects could change their strategies in case of the human higher one. But in case of computer, in this case computer has very poor capability. So like this one, but actually the same reward, okay, obtain the same reward because in the same uh, strategy is random uh, strategy by computer, okay. So uh, this is a very important uh, video clip. Uh, a little bit longer, but uh, please look at. So this is some social interaction. So look at the, some behavior of the human subject. This is fixed behavior. My name is uh, something, something. Uh, Nice to meet you. So, the opponent is real human, okay. So it seems a very natural he conversation. Okay. She mentioned that uh, you are very cute. Okay, thank you so. Okay, let's game play with you. The human organism also said the female. Therefore, some very natural, smooth conversation. Okay, this is a human. Next one is uh, uh, actoloid, one of the android. Okay, so uh, the, of course the android, the appearance is very similar, but still the movement is unnatural. Okay, so look at the you know, subject uh, face, a little bit you know, unnatural. So my name is... Okay, android said, let's respond, my name is android. So you look so human like. Android says thank you. Oh, let's, get let's play a game with you. Oh, the Japanese style. This is Android. Okay. And next one is uh, uh, mechanical humanoid. This one. So look at the, some facial expression of the subject. My name is... It is a very, very mechanical tone. I'm just wondering again with you. Uh, and, and human is the best one to the thank you for something. Okay, so far, you know, the verbal communication is okay, almost okay. But still, uh, the human subject is wondering. And this is a key point. 
it's very difficult to do some you know, verbal communication. But still, the human subject asks to the same behavior. Has, you know, of course, the people cannot do uh, or uh, make the verbal communication, but also still gaze have. So she just look at it, the gaze of the people. So the, finally, the computer. But in this case, computer is very, very uh, you know, higher capability. And uh, one of the things is that there is a TV camera. So TV camera, like uh, watching the you know, behavior of the subject, and uh, the screen of the computer all the time screwed up, moving. So the human subject suppose that, okay, this computer reading my mind. So this is kind of the social bias. So after the war, this kind of the social interaction, the functional MRI scanner has happened. So we're in the, in the inside of uh, fMRI scanner, so human subject game as a, uh, play the game with the opponent. There's just a picture, the humans, the android, and the humanoid, the keypon, and the computers. But the actual is the you know, same game strategy of the computers. And the first result is that the behavior analysis. So well, in this case, the entropy is like this one. The human and the actoloid and the computer, the higher than the keypon and the infanoid. So it seems that the keypon and the infanoid are the lower capability. Uh, then they know human, the actoloid, and the computer. This is the first result. The second one is that we have some many questions to the, uh, the impression about the robots or some opponent. And then the PC analysis is the first component, second component, and third component. So we're, uh, the, for example, the human-like, the intelligent, escal, nice, cute, friendly, active, positive, and so on, so on, so on. So uh, the, Okay, so the, the first component uh, may correspond to some mental function score, like uh, the mind holderness, okay, like a humans and so on. On the other hand, the third component corresponds to the entropy. So what's that high entropy means then or some higher capability of the you know, strategy and so on. The unfortunate is the second component does not have any correspondence of the, you know, some, uh, some properties. And then we map the, you know, uh, some, this one. So horizontal axis is the mind holder and the vertical axis in the mind reader. The human has uh, the having the mind and also uh, the capability of the mind reading. So the actoloid a little bit less. And also uh, the humanoid. So the humans, the actoloid, uh, the android, and also the humanoid is a positive correlation between the mind holderness and the mind readerness. The keep on the computer is opposite. The keep on may have some mind holder, okay, very cute or something, but the lower capability of the mind reading. On the other hand, the computer doesn't have any something about mind something, but still the you know, mind reader, okay, so it's having a capability of the mind reading and so on. So the, the functional MRI scanning, so we analyze you know, the whole regressors. Why is so uh, for the game uh, one, game related activities? And uh, another three component is correspond to the uh, first component, second component, and the third component of the you know, PCA analysis. And the uh, FMS scan mentioned that, okay, so the mind holder correspond to the uh, red regions and the mind leader is the blue regions. So where the, you know, uh, we analyzed in you know, uh, some mind holderness and the mind readiness, and also were in the brain activities, the different brain regions activated by using these, uh, the, the, these properties. And uh, this indicates also where uh, green region is the brain regions of the activated by the, during the game. And also where you can see the purple region here, here. It's a, a, a TPJ, the temporal parietal junctions, and this area is shared by the two, uh, you know, uh, two properties of the mind holderness and the mind readiness. This is one of example of the divergence of the brain functions. Okay, TPJ may have some different functions or different network and so on. Summary of this one. Okay, so if the opponent suppose that this is anthropomorphic mind holder, so the the subject take the password taking and of the mentalizing their interaction, uh, in, intentions, tactics, and uh, even emotion, or into some dorsal media uh, simulated network. On the other hand, if the opponent suppose that the caregiver uh, categorized as a mind, 
So mind reader. So the subject mind mindful of the you know, possible uh, gaze of the opponent uh, owing to some uh, anterior uh, ventral uh, TPJ JPSS. So the social interaction with the uh, um, mind holder or the mind reader may distinctly shape the some internal representation of our social brain, which may in turn determine the how we behavior for the various agents that we encounter in our society. Okay, future, uh, future issues. Uh, one of the big questions is how to design the emotion of the robots. That's a big, big one, and many people suppose that it's impossible. So the Damajo mentioned that a lack of the homeostasis in the body uh, triggers some adaptive behavior by your brain networks. If emotion is a driving source of the generated behavior, this is very, very suggestive. So one of the powering work of the Western University is just robot, homo, robot they designed a the robot homeostasis based on the, you know, uh, overheat of the motor or the battery charging and so on. So, but you know, everything is a fixed parameter. Therefore, the behavior is adaptive, but not learning yet. So one of the best behavior of the, you know, this robot is sleeping because it minimizes energy consumption. But actually, the uh, you know, animals or the humans a little bit against this uh, criterion. For example, you know, falling is the leading cause of the accidental injury and the death in the child under five. So they try to explore against some risk or something. So this is related to some kind of intricate motivations. So intricate motivations now, the machine learning community and the development robots community focus on this one uh, from uh, mainly the, from a viewpoint of the information theory, but we need more uh, fundamental structure of the, you know, uh, about the intricate motivations. The language is uh, another headache. So the study is assessing that the severe to aphasic patient have reported the normal uh, cell mind processing. Therefore, the language capability is not essential about the empathy. But however, the language uh, faculty is needed in higher com empathy and the social connect, uh, context, in social context. But rather, the empathy and the motivation may accelerate the language cell. The hormones and the neurochemical the compounds is a very important role in the empathy. And we suppose that in you know, the typical ones, the oxytocin and the dopamine. And the both are related to the emotional empathy and the cognitive empathy. So we try to uh, utilize uh, these kind of the property as a gain control of the, these the properties and so on. And the facial expression is a very, very important part. And uh, this is our robot so we designed. So the affect, affect means you know, uh, some Italian word, it's very cute and so on. The point is that we like to study about the caregiver and the infant interaction, much more emotional one. The, to do that, we need more realistic the infant robots. So the, the, my colleague, the Hiroshi, uh, Hisashi Shara, designed this robot. At the beginning, first, the, we just uh, only the head, but with very, very special uh, skin or something. And also now you have some apatos actuated by the pneumatic uh, artificial muscle. And uh, okay, so very, very compliant movement and very, uh, the rigid movement is possible. Uh, we can make it. Uh, or so many other issues we have. So the, I have maybe published uh, this year towards the artificial empathy in the journal of the robot, uh, social robotics. So of course, you know, we, uh, this. Uh, some studies is uh, uh, you know, supported by the many members and also funding the agency. So JST, a lot of project, and also were, uh, JSPS members, and so on. Okay, thank you for your attention. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, uh, Minoru. Uh, we've got time for a couple of questions. Uh, question? So uh, let me start with a, uh, a question. So the, uh, the distinction between um, the sort of cognitive or, uh, and the, the non-cognitive empathy, uh, maybe you could clarify that for me a little bit. And, and, and you said that there was one would be, uh, if you could give me maybe an example of, of, of what would be cognitive empathy and what would be emotional empathy and then Maybe we could uh, discuss it further because I'm interested in that general contrast between the sort of uh, the sensation, the emotional aspect of experience versus perception and cognition. Uh, and I know, for example, in in tactile sensing, there's a separate channel even from the skin for processing the emotional quality of touch. 
And then, so perhaps it's not so surprising when you see separate areas lighting up in the brain for uh, emotion versus cognition. And I'm wondering if that's uh, a related thing to empathy or whether there's something else going on. Yes, uh, actually, the, uh, okay, in my talk, just uh, I mentioned some possibility or some possible structure of something. As you mentioned, you know, sometimes the cognitive, uh, cognitive aspect and the affective aspect uh, appears completely different or something. But the, uh, I suppose that some, uh, some, uh, you know, some original network structure you know, developed and uh, during the development process, okay, so uh, there's some different network that shared some, some uh, different network and different functions. So I suppose that, so not the simply the inclusion, not the simply the separate system, but the more complicated means. Sometimes the cognitive aspect and the affective aspect, sometimes the cognitive aspect is the dominant and the control is, you know, affective aspect. But sometimes affective aspect is dominant and control the cognitive aspect. But uh, to these issues that are completely related to each other, and sometimes depending on the context and the situation, so uh, this sort of control structure dynamically changing. So the, my desire is to find some kind of the fundamental structure which can control or the, you know, regulate you know, this aspect and so on. But actually, the you know, physical environment is some kind of the best of, uh, perception or the, you know, is maybe based on the, this one, I suppose maybe the cognitive and the affective as aspect is, can be controlled by the, you know, based on the depth structure, based on the, some visceral uh, perception or the internal perception. But actually, this is not uh, my desire, and we have not implemented it yet. Just we started, you know, some kind of the, uh, simulation of the, you know, uh, the fetal simulation, it's just uh, tactile sensations and also the touching the environment and so on. Therefore, we hope, you know, from now on, we try to attack the, this kind of program and so on. But especially, you know, at the beginning, it's a very lower one, is maybe we can attack. But the higher empathy, maybe we need some more human study, what kind of mechanism possible and so on. So on. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yeah, over here. Yeah, thanks a lot for this very interesting talk. I have a question related to the learning process. You, you show uh, at a certain moment the learning of the size of the body by touching uh, different parts with this snake movement. And my question is that, uh, is that something that you can, so it takes some time in, in, in the, for a child. Uh, for the um, robot case, can you speed up that process or not? The, the learning of the... Do we have some method to accelerate the artificially? So the parallel processing or very higher capability, the blade, the slide, and so on, so on. I think that uh, uh, the acceleration of the learning is not important for the research because uh, the order of the uh, acquiring the ability is the important thing. So, uh, mm, so I think that the important thing is that uh, uh, the the human acquire some ability in pro, uh, appropriate uh, period. So, uh, so that the uh, uh, development. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, so is that the uh, answer? Uh, uh, did we answer your question? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, the, okay, so we may have some kind of the technology to accelerate the learning. Right? But uh, the point is that some order of the development is almost fixed, it seems. Because uh, in case of the, you know, the ordinary development, normal development, but in case of the, you know, different disorders such as ASD or something, maybe they have the different pathway of the you know, development. In that case, the learning process may change or different. So in that case, the time scale, for example, or two or three kind of functions. In case of the normal kids, but all three you know, gradually develop and affect each other. But in case of the ASD or some kind of different disorder, maybe some functions you know, quickly or the earlier developed, the other one is uh, later. In that case, an imbalance may happen. So this may cause some kind of the, you know, phenomena of the different disorder that we, uh, we just we guess at this kind of thing. So in that sense, maybe the acceleration of the running time is, you know, if we add to this kind of capability or the one specific functions, also this affects you know, another function of development. So we should consider this kind of the balance between them, not actually the absolute, uh, the, you know, uh, absolute uh, computer time, but uh, also the, some relative weight or relative uh, speed of the, you know, each functions. Okay, I think we'll have to stop there, but uh, I'd like to thank again Minoru Asada for a very interesting talk, and also uh, the sponsorship we had from the <laughs> Japanese Society for Promotion of Science. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, that ends the, the oral program for today, but we have uh, one uh, last event before uh, we're going to free you to go for a drink on the terrace. And that's uh, a discussion about the future of...